And joining us is Keep Up's James Dodd, who was at England training on the Central Coast. They're loving life up there, James. It's great to have you on Dub at the Cup. Please bring us up to speed with uh, your takeaways and insights and also some of the people you chatted to at England training. Yeah, good evening, Tao. Good evening, Taryn. It was, it was a fantastic day up at Central Coast Stadium today. I think the, the locals that are kind of locals anyway I and mean, we spoke to a lot of England fans who we were hoping had flown over they actually lived on the central coast and they were there with their kids and it was a great day I think roughly close to 2,000 people turned up to watch the Lionesses train and and you know Serena Wiegmann was they had a really good session in front of the, the fans it was it was a full-on session as well there was nothing held back you know sometimes when you go to these events it often can be now yeah, they go through the motions a little bit they were having full full-size games in there it was really tackles were flying in and in terms of what observations I think Lauren James was an interesting one because we know that, you know, Taryn and I were discussing off air today before we came on about how impressive we thought she was in that game against Haiti when, when she came off the bench. She was having a couple of straps put on her back today when she was before the, the warm up started, which was very interesting and in, in, uh, a good observation of maybe it's perhaps as why she didn't start that game, you know, given there's a, maybe it might be an injury there. But, but it was just fantastic to see a, a, a large, very large travelling uh, press contingent following England. You know, there's a lot of expectations on the Lionesses coming into this tournament as as reigning European champions. Um, and there was also quite a few player, uh, members of an A-League fraternity in the crowd as well. One of those was the inaugural A-League Women's Central Coast Mariners head coach, Emily Husband. I asked her what she had made of the start to the Women's World Cup, especially some of the bigger teams and the start that they've made. It's a really hard um, you know, thing to overcome when you're playing against teams that are sitting in against you. You've got to be really creative. You've got to move the ball well. Um, and you know, a, a lot of the teams um, probably wouldn't have prepared to be, to be up against that sort of playing style. Um, so yeah, where you know, ultimately they might not have played as well as what we know they can do, but ultimately they've still got the job done. You know? So that's the most important thing in tournament football. Might not be pretty, but it's walking away with that win. So we just heard from Emily Husband, Central Coast Mariners inaugural women's coach. James, what did you make of that chat? Yeah, it was very interesting because, you know, she was there with um, Julie Dolan was there as well. Um, Annalise Rasmussen was there, you know, really sort of taking on board potentially, I suppose, from not just the coaching perspective for Emily, but for, for Annalise, for, from a player's perspective, watching some of these players go through the, you know, the sort of the, the drills that they would go through. Just picking up little hits and tips, uh, hints and tips, I should say, that we saw actually a couple of the fans did the same thing. It was really nice for them to actually watch what these elite level players go through when they're when they're going through these these sort of open training sessions. And as as I touched on earlier, it really was a proper training session. There was nothing held back, and it was great to see them. I suppose maybe with a little bit of a, a point to prove as well, because you know we saw the, the 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 analysis coming from the UK after that game against Haiti. Very similar to the Matildas. I think a lot of people back in England were expecting them to play a lot better than they did. As Emily Husband said, the most important thing, you know, there's pressure on, you walk away with the win and that's that's a lot of the job done in the group stages. And, you know, we did have a quite a funny moment. I asked her if she was there as a scouting mission. She, you know, said I would love, I would dream to have some of these players, maybe not in the first season at the Mariners. But, you know, it, it was nice to sort of touch on what is such a feel-good factor as well with that football club. You know, we saw the men's win the championship last year. There's such a there's such a buzz around the Central Coast Football Club in general with the with the ladies team coming in this season. Um, one player that I did, Taryn and Toe, try and recruit on behalf of the A-League Women's today was the Manchester United captain, Katie Zellum. This is what she had to say I, uh, when I asked her if she'd be interested in applying her trade on these shores. To be honest, I'm an absolute sun worshipper and it's chucking it down in Manchester right now. So that's definitely a great factor, I think. You never know where you can end, end up in your career and Australia is a beautiful country from what we've seen so far. So looking forward to exploring some more. For us, we're always wanting to push women's football forward and whether that be England, Australia, across the world, we really want to see the game grow and teams develop. Been to some phenomenal places with England and on holiday, but the view there is just breathtaking. The whole session, I was like, I want to get a photo over there, I think. Australia's got so much to offer. We've been here, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane. I think every place is so different. That's what's special about the country. Well, Liberty A-Leagues coaches, you heard it here first. Katie Zellum should be number one on your list to recruit next summer. James, what did you make of England overall? Of course, they've got their next game coming up on Friday right here against Denmark. How do you rate their chances? It will be, I think we'll see a very different England um, from what we saw against Haiti. You know, they had a great support up in up in Brisbane. They This will be like a home game for them um, on Friday against Denmark at Allianz. You know, that we know that there is so many, you know, one right here, so many English people that live in Sydney. I have tickets for the game. 
TBC where I'm going to be working at the game, so I'll be giving those to another couple of English people to go along and, and, and cheer on the Lionesses. But I think you will see a different England. I think you, you touched on um, rightly so earlier on, Taryn, about how some of the teams like Brazil have played with no fear. And I think if England are to, to really try and set the tournament alight and, and live up to those that tag of being one of the favourites for this tournament, they're going to have to play better. They're going to have to play with a lot more freedom than they did against Haiti. I think against Denmark, it might be one of those cases where they, in their minds, they're playing against a better team, so they will naturally raise their game. So I think it will be, will be fascinating to see how they do, because if they don't get a result against Denmark, then that makes the picture of that group look very interesting. So fascinating to see, 45,000 expected for the game here on, uh, on Friday. And as I say, England will be very much looking forward to what will be a home game for them.